For today, uh, we're going to run through two chapters. We're going to run through chapters 12 and chapters 13. Chapter 12 is all about reduced visibility. So we're going to start with our vehicle window. Uh, we need to keep it clean. You um, need to know how to use your defroster, your defogger. Um, usually cars have a rear defroster. Usually trucks or SUVs don't. Sometimes they do, but most time that's only in a car. Um, you got to know where to use your AC uh, or how to use your AC and your heater, um, how to open up your windows, um, and how to keep your uh, window clear in case of vapor or smoke or anything building up inside your car. Other things that can cause reduced visibility um, would be the sun. I know we've talked about this before, um, so obviously don't look at the sun. Uh, try and use your low beam lights during the day if you can. Um, you don't have to use your lights during the day, but you can. Uh, if you have sensitive eyes, light colored eyes usually, you want to have sunglasses or be able to use your sun visor. Um, and also you need to know usually in the morning and in the late afternoon when the sun is rising or setting, that's when the sun is worst for drivers. At nighttime, uh, you need to um, have your lights on, obviously. Uh, high beam lights, we've talked, you know, shine up uh, and shine. They're not so much brighter, but they shine more directly in front of the car, so they show more. Uh, the low beam lights, which are just the regular lights, uh, those will be what you use most nights. Um, if you see an oncoming car, then you need to turn your high beam lights off. Or if you're following somebody, you need to turn your high beam lights off as well. Uh, and anytime you're in bad weather, you want to just use your regular lights and not your high beam lights. Uh, if you meet a car that does not have their lights on, you can flash your headlights if you want to. You don't have to, um, but it you can do that. Um, if you meet somebody that has their high beam lights on, you can do the same thing where you can flash your headlights at them uh, to alert them that their high beam lights are on. Uh, if someone is driving at you with their high beam lights on, uh, it's best to look down into the right of the roadway and then slowly look back towards the middle to keep yourself from being blinded. Uh, you'll know if somebody has their high beam lights on compared to their regular lights. Um, overdriving your headlights uh, is something that would happen at night. Um, it's kind of a weird concept, but it's if your stopping distance is greater than what your lights are illuminating. Uh, so that's mostly for a foggy conditions. Your lights don't show very much. So if you're driving more than you can see, um, but at the same time, you know, it's all pretty difficult to, to follow along. So, but overdriving your headlights is not being able to stop within what your lights show. Fog, in my opinion, is one of the worst um, things to drive in. Uh, you always want your low beam lights on if you wanna know why. Uh, just turn your high beam lights on once when you're driving in the fog and you'll see that it's not something that you wanna do. Um, drive slowly, increase your following distance, be prepared to stop uh, in fog. Like I said, it's really difficult to see. And a lot of times uh, it can be one of the most dangerous um, driving situations. Rain, uh, obviously use your windshield wipers. Um, use your defroster if you have to. Uh, Illinois state law requires that if your uh, windshield wipers are on, then your headlights must be on as well. So that's something to keep in mind if it's a bright day, but raining, you need to make sure your lights are on. Snow, um, we've I think we've watched a video on this, driving snow uh, or slush or ice. If it builds up on your window, make sure you clear it. Uh, if you go out to your car in the morning and there's snow on it, make sure you clear off the whole thing, the windows, the headlights, everything. Um, if you don't have to drive in the snow, then don't. Uh, use your low beam lights. If you have four wheel drive, use it. Um, 
All it does is it, it gives you more power. It doesn't necessarily give you more grip, which is what a lot of people think it does. Uh, so it just gives you more power to get through snow uh, and not to really drive on ice or anything. There's my dog, Nelson. Uh, so continuing in chapter 12 now, um, when it starts to rain, that is when roads are the wettest, or when it starts to snow, that's when roads are the wettest, uh, because the water and the and the oil on the road don't mix, so the oil comes to the top, makes it slick. Um, so hydroplaning is when your tires lose contact with your with the roadway, so you're just kind of floating on water. Uh, you aren't in contact with the road, so you have no control over where the car is going. Um, can happen in as little as an inch and a half of water uh, and as slow as 35 miles an hour. So it's not just because you're driving fast. Um, if your tires are old and bald, uh, then you're more likely to hydroplane. Obviously never dive or drive through deep water. Um, deep water is anything that can touch the bottom of your car because uh, then the water can get into your engine and obviously and all of that. So you don't want that. So never drive through deep water or moving water any water that's moving across the road like a river is flooding or something obviously uh, don't drive through that either snow um, sometimes snow is, is really difficult to drive in sometimes it's not uh, usually if it snows for the first time that's the worst because people act like they've never driven in it before um, when it's really, really cold and there's snow on the road, that's when it's bad. Uh, or if it's been, or if it's snowed and all the roads get packed down, that's when it's bad. So usually in the snowing, uh, you want to try and drive in the tire tracks of the car in front of you. Uh, when you're driving in the snow, you want to obviously accelerate gently, brake gently, steer gently, um, that you don't want to start skidding. Uh, if your car were to get stuck, you need to rock your vehicle. Um, what rock your vehicle means, you put it in drive, you go a little bit forward, put it in reverse, a little bit backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, just to try and create enough space in the snow that you can get out of it. Uh, if you can help push the car at that point in time, great, uh, if somebody is with you, but that's what rocking the vehicle is. You don't want to spin your tires in snow or mud because uh, you're just going to dig a hole and not be able to get out. If you're driving in ice, um, obviously that's when maybe it's raining and the temperature's dropping or in the snow. Uh, ice obviously is bad. Black ice is ice that you can't see on the roadway. Um, if there's water on top of ice, uh, then you might think you're driving through a puddle, but you're driving through ice, so you need to be careful there. Um, and obviously ice on your window, keep it clear, keep it clean. Ice forms on bridges before other roadways because you have the cold air above and below the road. Um, so that's why you always see those signs say, watch for ice on bridge that look real funny in the summer, um, but they leave them up all year. Um, black ice, I said, thin sheet of ice that are difficult to see. Um, and sometimes ice does form in the tire tracks, so you got to be ready for that. Other reduced traction situations, gravel roads. Um, you know, it's a gravel road, so drive slowly. You don't want to kick up rocks everywhere. Um, driving the wheel paths of those leaves, construction areas with dirt and mud, anything that prevent your tires from being in total contact with the road. Skidding. Uh, skidding is when your tires uh, lose grip on the roadway, not necessarily contact, which is grip, so you start to slide. Um, it can occur when you brake, when you accelerate, when you steer. They're they all different types of skid. Uh, this is why hand over hand uh, on the outside of the steering wheel is important because you can react uh, the most. Um, Obviously, never give up trying to correct a skid. No Jesus take the wheel moments. You know, it was good for Carrie Underwood. It's not good for you. All right, continue to drive. Continue to steer as best you can. 
power skid, braking skid. Obviously, a power skid is you apply too much pressure to the accelerator. A braking skid is you apply probably too much braking power. Um, obviously, the, the best way to do that is to let up on the brake or the gas to get your wheels rolling or, or slowed down. A front wheel skid uh, is if you start to turn and the, and the car continues to go straight. Um, the best thing you can do is release the brake or the accelerator and then continue to turn in the direction you want to go and eventually the car will grab and it'll go. A rear wheel skid is more like a fishtail where the back end kind of slides out if you see people doing donuts in a parking lot in snow. Usually it's a rear wheel skid that they're trying to do spinning in a circle. If it happens on accident, uh, you want to release your brake or accelerator again. Um, and once again, steer in the direction you want to go. Um, and you don't want to overcorrect it. So you want to make sure that uh, you know, you're not oversteering, which is steering more than you need to. So it's a fine line and it's something that, you know, it's kind of all reactionary. If you skid in a curve or a turn, uh, slow down. Um, make sure you slow down ahead of time so that this doesn't happen. Uh, if you start to skid in a in a curve or or a turn, uh, you're probably going off the road. Controlled braking, um, just reduce your speed as quickly as possible. If you have anti-lock brakes, which everybody will, just slam on the brakes as hard as you can. Um, the the wheels shouldn't lock up um, it should slow you down gradually but quickly um, if you do not have anti-lock brakes you have to press the brake release it press the brake release it so that the wheels don't lock up and you start to slide uh, but most everybody will have anti-lock brakes other weather conditions windy um, we've talked a little bit we've talked a little bit about wind in the past um, especially when you drive past a truck uh, try to not stay on the center line. Um, if you see a tornado, they say get out of your car and lay in a ditch or get under a bridge. Neither of that really makes sense to me, but that's what science says. My thought would be, you know, drive away from the tornado, but uh, get out of your car and lay in a ditch. When it's really hot, uh, if your car starts to overheat and maybe smoke or anything starts coming out, um, you want to turn off your air conditioner and turn on your heater. Uh, that will hopefully try and regulate the inside of the car temperature and the engine temperature, and it'll pull the hot air out of the engine and just into the car. Um, so that's one way to uh, try and cool off your car. In cold weather, um, make sure that just make sure there's no snow over your exhaust when you start it, um, and you should be ready to go. And try not to set the parking brake in cold weather, so that it doesn't freeze and stay locked. Um, but if you have to set the parking brake, you have to set the parking brake. Tips for smooth winter driving: keep your window clear, drive slow, use the IPD process, and uh, you'll be good to go. Don't use cruise control. That was it for chapter 12. Uh, chapter 13 and 12 kind of go along with one another because 13 is all about uh, vehicle malfunctions. So we'll just continue on with this and do both chapters at the same time. Uh, tire failure um, can be when your tires wear out. We talked about testing the, your tires with a penny. That's what the Lincoln test is. Um, Obviously, they, they wear quicker on bad roads than they do on good roads. Um, so there's not much you can do about where you're driving, but try to avoid hitting things at all costs with your tires to get the most out of your tires. A blowout is when your tire just explodes. Uh, hopefully it never happens to you. I've never seen it happen. I've been near a semi that it happened to, but I just heard that. Um, so, but a blowout is when it loses all of its air at one time. Uh, if you have a blowout on one of your front tires, your car will try and pull to the direction that the tire blew out 
If it happens to one of your back tires, it might fishtail back and forth. Two hands on the steering wheel, try and correct it. Uh, try and make sure you're driving straight, and then obviously signal and slowly get off the road so you can change that tire. This is, here it is again. Grip steering wheel firmly, ease off your accelerator, get off the road, come to a stop. Change your tire if you can. Uh, we'll watch a video about changing a tire uh, and ask some questions that way. It's just a sequence, it's really easy. If we were in class, uh, we would have gone out and taken the wheels off the driver's ed car and putting them back on. Uh, so if you want to ask somebody in your house to, if you can change a tire in the driveway, uh, do that just because everybody should know how to change a tire. Uh, if your brakes fail, um, you have brakes for the front wheels and for the back wheels. Uh, chances are you won't have total brake failure. Something will always work. Um, but usually uh, the warning light will tell you if something is wrong with your brakes. Um, total brake failure, if you have total brake failure, somebody damaged your car and cut your brake lines. Um, if you have no brakes um, and you can't do anything, keep hitting the brake, see if it's jammed or anything, kick it, do what you can to try and uh, release the brake. Um, downshift to a lower gear uh, if, if you can, um, pull the parking brake, hit the parking brake. Uh, in worst case scenario, rub against a curb or try and hit something to get slowed down. Um, but yeah, do the best you can to get your car stopped. Uh, other brake types of brake failure, brake fade is usually in the mountains. If you're going down a mountain, you keep pressing the brake, pressing the brake. They can get overheated and not just, they just can't work as well. So just let them cool off and they'll be fine. Um, if you drive through water, uh, just gently press your brakes after a couple times to dry the brakes off. Uh, if your accelerator gets stuck, which isn't in the book, um, sometimes maybe the spring broke below the pedal and it just falls to the floor. Uh, if that's the case, it's just going to continue to accelerate. So you want to shift to neutral. That takes all the power away, get slowed down and pull over. Um, if the accelerator gets stuck, uh, you want to kick it, press the brakes, uh, choose an open zone. Once again, um, you want to shift to neutral uh, so that, once again, you just stop speeding up. And you can pull over and, and get the car turned off. Uh, once you get stopped, then you want to try and free the pedal, remove the obstruction. Uh, if you can't get it fixed, then you got to get somebody to come help you fix it. If your engine just shuts off, I've had this happen to me before driving. Um, if your engine just shuts off, it's just going to go. Um, it'll make steering uh, and braking more difficult because um, if the car is still moving, you'll still be able to steer. Uh, but it's, you know, it's going to be very difficult. So you want to shift to neutral right away. Um, cause that allows the car to continue to roll. Uh, you want to find an open path and obviously get off the roadway. Try not to stop because once you stop, it's done. So you want to keep rolling. Um, remember once you're in neutral, you can try and restart the car. Um, if you can't get it restarted, then obviously you got to call for help. Um, but try to keep the car rolling as long as you can, even as you're getting off to the side. Turn your hazard lights on and go from there. Uh, we talked about if your engine overheats, um, turn your heat around. Uh, and never uh, open up your hood if your engine is, is hot. Uh, if you can't steer anymore, that's bad. Uh, so you want to honk your horn, turn on your flashers. Uh, take your foot off the accelerator. You don't want to come to a brake because you won't. You don't want to steer around things. Um, you can turn your car on and off, put it to neutral, turn it off, turn it back on, see if you can steer. Um, yeah, hopefully that never happens to you. Loss of forward vision. Uh, usually, if your hood flies up for any reason, uh, you can look at the crack below. the. There's usually a crack between where the hood and the 
window are, so you should be able to see there. If not, roll down your window and look out your window. Uh, you want to try and slow down and get out of traffic as quickly as you can so you can latch your hood and get it shut. Um, if you have no headlights, uh, you can turn on your flashing lights, you can turn other lights, um, but you, you really shouldn't be driving if you don't have headlights. Um, if your headlight goes out and you need to change it, super easy. Don't go anywhere. Just undo like three screws and change a light bulb. Super easy. Um, if your windshield gets splashed, which is, this happened in the driver's ed car and was super scary for us because the girl couldn't find the windshield wipers. Um, but if your window gets splashed, just turn some windshield wipers on and pull over if you have to. If the car's on fire, um, pull over, get out, turn it off, get out, and let it go. Okay, don't do anything, call the fire department, you got insurance for a reason. Don't try and work on a car that is on fire, don't try and put the fire out. Just, sorry, you're getting a new car. If the car stalls on the railroad tracks, like we saw in that video a couple weeks ago, uh, get out of the vehicle. Um, you can put it in neutral and try and push it, obviously. If a train is approaching, though, you want to run towards the train, okay? Uh, not right at the train, obviously, but in the direction the train is coming from because it's going to cause debris when it hits your car. It flies everywhere, so do not run away from the train. You actually want to go towards the train. That'll be the safest. Chapter 13, moving forward here, driver error. Um, if your front wheels drive off the road, uh, just hold on to the wheel, gently steer back onto the roadway. It's very easy. Um, some, some driver's ed teachers even have you do this in class to try and uh, help you get prepared for this. Um, once again, grip steering wheel firmly, let off accelerator, uh, check for traffic, ease back onto the road, and then you're good to go. Uh, be careful not to oversteer, which we talked about steering too much. Counter steer if you do, which means if I'm steer too far to the left, bring it back just a little bit to the right and go from there. If I have to swerve for any reason, um, if something crosses my path and I have to swerve, I need to make a quick movement, usually one full turn to the left, bring it back to the right. Um, you have to do this while deciding if there's anybody to your left or right. Um, you want to try not to brake and lock your wheels up. Um, but usually, uh, if your stopping distance is less than, or is, excuse me, greater than me to the child or me to the bike or whatever in front of me, I'm going to have to swerve. Identify your path, grip your wheel. Steer quickly in one direction, then counter steer back. And you're considering distance and speed, obviously. Continuing on, roadway hazard potholes. Um, potholes are caused by water freezing and cracks. Um, the, uh, they can cause major damage. Um, try to avoid those. Sharp curves, most are marked or have a speed limit sign. Um, break gently if you realize you have a problem. Uh, about halfway through the curve, it's better to accelerate, um, and that'll help you stabilize your vehicle. If there's an object in the road, never hit it. Um, if you can avoid it and break, uh, you can steer around it, or you can straddle it, which is if it's something in the middle of the road. And it will fit under your car and drive right over the top. That's called straddle. If for some reason you drive into a lake, you end up in deep water, you want to open up your windows, uh, unfasten your seatbelt, and climb out the window. Um, if the car is totally underwater, um, you will not be able to open the doors, most likely. Uh, so you're going to have to wait for the car to fill up. 
and then you will be able to climb out of a window because with the water rushing in, you're not going to be able to get out. So you'd have to wait for the car to fill up and then climb out the window. So try to avoid driving into any deep water. If you were to get in a collision, um, obviously uh, there's some things that you have to do. If there's a head-on, if you're threat of a head-on collision, obviously uh, brake gently and quickly, blow your horn, steer to the right um, to try to avoid a head-on collision. If you think you're going to get T-boned or somebody's going to impact the side of your car, um, you can brake or accelerate, obviously, to try and avoid that. Blow your horn once again, uh, change lanes, um, but sometimes collisions are inevitable. If you think somebody's going to maybe rear-end you, uh, flash your brake lights, pull forward, turn to the right. Um, maybe you got to go into the intersection, uh, but you want to actually be off of the brake before impact to reduce some, some whiplash effects. If you have a car, stop, or if you have a collision, excuse me, stop, aid the injured, prevent further damage, send for the police, and exchange your insurance information. Never leave the scene of a collision. Last thing here. In Financial responsibility law requires you to prove that you can pay for damages you cause that result in death or injury of property damages. Um, you buy insurance for a company by paying a premium. That's what you pay the insurance company. Um, and like I said, we've talked that it's more expensive for young males and, and older people. Um, excuse me. Um, I do not know a lot about insurance. A policy is what you are insured, uh, what your coverage is. There's many different kinds of insurance. Uh, liability insurance covers um, others when you are at fault. Collision insurance can uh, cover damages to your vehicle as well. Deductible is a lot of times you have a $500, $1,500 deductible. That's how much you pay for the damage before the insurance takes over. A bunch of things affect your, your insurance rate. Um, driving record age, how much you drive, your gender, your marital status, type of vehicle, where you live, all of that affects your